So one thing that always made me laugh was when you had this uh, Queen Tut uh, person, if you remember the whole Jason Goodman saga, uh, she used the Nefertiti bust uh, and called herself Queen Tut. So you can read through, uh, you know, the Wikipedia, it says it's a painted stucco coated uh, limestone bust of Nefertiti, uh, the great royal wife of the iconoclastic or the pharaoh uh, uh, Akhenaten. And he was the guy, the sun worshiper. He was the uh, monotheist. Uh, and they say that it was done by Thutmose. Um, here, you can read about it here. Or we can, here, let me just show you a close up and we'll talk about it, okay? I'm going to put this down because it's boring otherwise. So, if you take a look at it, it's very interesting for a lot of reasons. Uh, it doesn't fit with most of the idealized um, uh, work that we see with uh, uh, other uh, pharaonic images. And uh, it was never on public display, um, which, you know, when you put things on public display and... Uh, Especially in earlier times, they didn't understand microclimate conditions. They were uh, brutish with uh, with uh, how they displayed things. Things got destroyed. Um, you saw a lot of that in uh, you know even the most sophisticated areas of the world in Britain, for instance, um, and with Schliemann, with uh, with Troy. So much was destroyed, and so um, you know you've got this sun-worshipping pharaoh who's an absolute renegade and uh, Akhenaten was, um, you know, pretty wild. Uh, He's trying to radically uh, overhaul uh, the polytheist uh, Egyptian religion. And so part of what he did was he was rather like uh, Lorenzo the Magnificent of the Medici family. He would be supporting uh, innovative artistic work, and that was called the uh, Amarna style because that was the period. And you have to understand this guy was um, just a very singular personality. You had these ultra conservative uh, predecessors that were very ritualized, um, and then. Uh, a Kenneton comes along and he says, let's include naturalism. Uh, let's forget the stylized exaggerations. Uh, and it's beautiful. Uh, you, you just don't see that often in the ancient world. And um, as realism and art uh, continues to metastasize um, social importance, uh, continues to decrease. Um, you see that with a lot of royalty and nobility, uh, art, kings, princes, nobles, and, you know, other uh, superior folk, uh, you know, didn't want to be shown as they really were, but um, something greater than the peasant. And there were exceptions to the rule. Uh, the Roman Republic, uh, where senators would have warts and all um it was called virism it was absolute fidelity to the visage um but getting back to nefertiti um the egyptians had a very iconic uh a very canon based uh arena of portraiture that was uh partially based upon their belief in the concept of the afterlife and uh, you see that uh, within their uh, stelae and within their hieroglyphs. Um, their artwork always represented their belief in the eternal post-mortem existence. And it was very uh, symbolic of their personal exalted status in that realm. So they would exist on earth as pharaohs, but in the afterlife, uh, they would continue their godlike divinity. And it's all about divine nature. 
That's how it was. And it wasn't just uh, the Egyptians. Alexander the Great wanted to be thought of as, uh, as a god. And so uh, here we go with uh, Akhenaten, and what he says is, I'm going to worship the sun. I'm going to worship one uh, deity. And this is the uh, Amarna period. So he basically throws out all the other gods, and uh, he rules for a certain amount of time, and then he goes. And when he goes, uh, the ultra-conservatives come back, and they basically want to wipe out uh, any fingerprint, any footprint of his existence. So it's a um, very interesting piece. And um, there are some people who say that it's fake. Uh, there's a, a, a guy out of... Uh, 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 Switzerland, uh, an art historian, uh, Henri uh, Sterling, I think, uh, who says that uh, it's crap. This is, you know, uh, from around 1912. And he wrote a book, um, Le Buste de Nefertiti, Un Impostre de la Egyptie, uh, or Egypt, Um So, uh, uh, it, in French, uh, that would mean the bust of uh, Nefertiti and Egyptology fraud or uh, fake. And so uh, Sterling uh, claimed that the bust was created um, uh, to test uh, ancient pigments uh, and that a Prussian prince, a guy named Johann uh, Georg, um, basically uh, pretended it was genuine and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, I don't know about that because if you look at uh, other art under a uh you're going to see the same thing. A Kentaman, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, you're going to see the same thing during that uh, small, uh, you know, little window, couple decade window, 3,400 years ago. So uh, that's that. And uh, once again, um, there's also negative scholarship. So you never know if Henri uh, Stirling was engaging in that. He was making the suggestion in his book that it was on the orders of a German archaeologist named uh, Ludwig uh, Borschat, uh, yeah, Bor Borschat, um, uh, who uh, took the credit for finding uh, the treasure on uh, the banks of the Nile. And that was in that workshop. And so um, you don't know. <laughs> you simply don't know. You know, they were saying the same thing about uh, Salvador Mondi. They are saying it's not a da Vinci. And uh, they had some arguments that weren't making a lot of sense. They were saying that, well, you know, the globus, the, the orb, had to be a crystal without realizing that uh, da Vinci was coding up. Uh, that the orb in uh, Jesus' hand was glass. And that in itself was a signal that we talked about. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting to see the arguments that go on. And if you remember that bust, what uh, Sterling was saying was it was part of the Art Nouveau revolution that... Um, that uh, the shoulders had been cut vertically on Nefertiti, so, uh, you know, it should have been done horizontally, but because it was done vertically, uh, it accentuated her facial features uh, in a manner that resembled uh, the Art Nouveau style. So Art Nouveau was a style that came along before Art Deco. I remember I used to have some Nouveau pieces. Uh, you'd see a lot of floral things in them. And then Art Deco, you had uh, zigzag and streamline and all that. So that's that. Um, but at any rate, you know, it, it's just very interesting. Uh, and I'll show you what the bust originally looked like. There you go. Okay. So um, to me, I think the thing's original. I really do. And I think they have better dating techniques uh, these days so we can get down to the bottom of the mystery. This hasn't been done yet. Okay, that's that.